What's up ladies? Today I'm gonna show you some sweet legendaries I- What? The only thing legendary here is me. What's up guys? First of all, welcome to a slightly less scuffed room. Um, we've done some small upgrades, finally. For anyone wondering about the voice effects in the intro, all will be revealed in the next few days, so stay tuned. For now though, I'm going to do a disc legendary tier list, and I'm gonna just go through each effect and talk about why I've ranked them, what I have, and where they're gonna be useful, how often we're gonna see them used. Obviously, you're gonna be able to switch them around a lot, so I'm gonna try and go through and say, okay, yeah, this one actually might see some use, this one probably won't, that sort of thing, just so we get a bit of a better idea of what to go for when Shadowlands launches. So I'm just gonna go down through, and here we've got our disc tier list arena ranking uh, in the usual document. Uh, still got a few more things to add to it and upgrade, as you can see, but we're getting there. Shadowlands a little bit away still, so there's, there's time, there's time. Uh, if you do want to check this document out just for reference or to look at it in a little bit more detail, the link for it will be in the description as always. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, we've got Echo of ENR. Summon a spiritual familiar to your side. Your spells and abilities have a chance to send your familiar to a nearby ally, increasing their damage and healing by zero. I'm guessing this is going to be a percentage. Um, for 20 seconds, I need to update that. If no allies are present, your familiar will flock towards the nearest enemy, increasing your damage against them by 8% for 15 seconds. Uh, so, as a kind of support, utility sort of legendary, this is good, I guess. But there are so many other legendaries that have a more direct impact uh, that you can kind of play around, uh, you know, and, and wield to your advantage, if you will. So, I've given this a B. Uh, depending on the meta and how much it actually feels like it does, this might increase to an A. For now, I've got it as a B. Uh, it's okay, but yeah, not up there with some of the better ones. Dealing damage has a high chance to release a blast of spiritual energy for zero holy damage if another ally who bears the judgment of the Arbiter is within 5 to 20 yards of you. The blast will also arc to them, dealing a bunch of holy damage to all enemies in the arc. So this is sort of reliant on other people having it as well. Uh, but I think that a lot of other classes have a lot of better legendaries than this. I think this is gonna be something that you'll potentially see in PvE, but not so much in PvP. I've given this a B as well. Although I think this is actually closer to a C, whereas the Echo of ENR closer to an A. Then we've got more Rattle. Killing an enemy has a high chance to summon an explosive more. I mean, as soon as you see killing an enemy, for, for Arena you can already say, okay, this is probably not going to be that great. Given this a C, maybe it works when you kill pets, but there's not that much value from this in Arena. Norganon's Sagacity. Casting a spell grants Sagacity, stacking up to 10. So 10 spells gets you five seconds of casting while moving, I guess. Um, if you stand still for those 10 spells. Again, this looks like something that's going to be solid for PvE if you're not having to move that much. And then when you do have to move, you kind of save, you know, you've saved these up and you're gonna not lose value from having to move, which is kind of nice. For PvP though, uh, I don't think this is that strong. You're already able to move, you know, penance while moving. You have a lot of instances, discs, you know, you have shields, you have dots, you have cooldowns that you can use. So I think that this is not that valuable. Generally, you can, you know, use one of these other abilities while moving Made the main things you have to stand and cast is Mend and Smite, right? So, value of this is relatively low, I'd say, in PvP. So, again, I've given it a B. Then we've got Sethers Proclamation. In my opinion, this shouldn't exist, but it does, so we've got to give it a ranking. Uh, reduce the effectiveness of crowd control effects by 10%. I believe this doesn't stack with the Relentless Trinket. Uh, but it will work when you're using PvP Trinket. So, you can use the PvP Trinket and get 10% Relentless, which is pretty powerful in my opinion. Uh, successfully applying a loss of control effect to, effect to an enemy, interrupting an enemy or dispelling a target, any target, sorry, will increase all your secondary stats by zero. I'm guessing this is a percentage as well. I need to, need to 
edit all these tooltips uh, for 15 seconds. This cannot occur more than once every 30 seconds. So, I mean, the dispelling portion is really nice, right? Um, obviously, your offensive and defensive dispelling pretty regularly, so you're going to have it up most of the time uh, for those 15 seconds every 30 seconds. Uh, I've given this an A just because I think that it's um, dependent on whether or not you're playing Trinket. You're not going to play Trinket all the time. There's going to be some stuff where you play Relentless. Then you won't play this, obviously, because they don't stack. Uh, I've given an S to stuff that you can literally use against everything, and it's just always always valuable. Whereas if something is good, I've given it an A, but only if it's good in you know certain sort of situations. Um, so yeah, that's why it's an A. I think you, you'll definitely use this against some stuff. Uh, stable Phantasma Lure. Increases Phantasma earned by 25%. I mean, this is like something to do with Torghast, I think. Uh, this is nothing to do with Arena. I've given it a C. C is my bottom rank. It's it's useless, essentially. Uh, killing a creature in the moor increases another C. The first time you damage an elite enemy, another C. So these are all just completely useless for Arena. That's fine. Then as we go down, there are four different kinds of legendary, uh, yeah, of legendary effects for Priest. This is for all of Priests, regardless of spec. Then you have four Disc, four Holy, and four Shadow. So right now we're going to look at the, the Priest ones. Uh, the first one being Measured Contemplation. For every 15 seconds you do not cast a Shadow Man. The healing for your next Shadow Man is increased by 50%. This can stack up to four times. So this can actually start stacking at the start of the game, right? So your first Mend is actually going to do a lot. If you cast a Mend... Um, you know, at 14 seconds or something, you're not going to see any benefit from this. So this is similar to the way that Death Throws Mend sort of stacked up in BFA or the Spirit Essence. Uh, but this is slightly less powerful in that there's no gradual increase in it, right? It's a big step up every 15 seconds. So if you do find yourself having to Mend at, at you know, 13, 14 seconds, uh, it could be, it can get awkward. So I feel like this loses a bunch of value there. Otherwise, I think this would be really strong all round uh, and force you, or, or sorry, allow you to cast a lot fewer mends. So I've given this an A. And we've got Twins of the Sun Priestess. Power Infusion also grants you 100% of its effect when used on an ally. And there's actually a conduit that reduces the cooldown of Power Infusion. So I think if you're playing something like RMP, this could be really strong to obviously use on your mage. Uh, to get it yourself as well. So you're doing a go, you pop PI on your mage, you get it on yourself, you're CCing everything. Uh, there's low chance for it to get purged. And you, you know, you can do really good pump on a go with that extra uh, that extra haste. So I've given this an A. I think this definitely has opportunities to be used. Uh, keep in mind, you can also use this in other comps versus stuff that doesn't purge because it's haste, right? It doesn't have to be used on a caster. It can be used on anything. Uh, everyone will benefit from that haste. When Shadow of Pain expires on a target, three allies within 30 yards of a target are healed for 50% of spell power. So I've actually given this a B. I don't think you're going to see that much value from this. Uh, the healing of it is relatively low. Um, and generally, you don't really want to let your, your Purge the Wicked expire. Like You want to try and refresh it like right at the end. Uh, so I, th I think it's not something that you're going to see a lot of use out of in Arena. Uh, but the next one you will, Vault of Heavens, Leap of Faith, uh, instead causes you to leap to your target and has two charges. So this actually solves an issue for Disc against Cleave, whereby you generally don't have any mobility. Uh, you have, you know, Shield, uh, which gives you a little bit of speed with Body and Soul, or Feather if you're running it, but that's it. You don't have any freedom, you don't have anything like that. Uh, so this is actually going to allow you to escape in a lot of situations where you wouldn't normally. So I think this definitely can see some use against Cleaves. Uh, so I've given this an A. Then we've got the Penitent one, uh, which I'm, I'm not a big fan of the way that this works. I think it's a bit too RNG. But if you're running the Radiance Conduit, which obviously buffs Radiance with Ultimate Radiance, this definitely could see some use. Uh, it's, it's a bit sad that it's at 50%. I think this is something that you could look out for to be changed by Blizzard coming in the coming weeks because everyone I've talked to dislikes the randomness of it. Radiant's quite a long cooldown, so if you know you, you pop two Radiants and it doesn't proc, it just feels like you've got no legendary then, right? So not a big fan of the 50%, but something that could change. Uh, having said that, I think it's still an A. I think this is 
quite strong in terms of bursts potential, either healing or damage. Uh, and I think there are potentially some comps where you could see use out of it if you're running Radiance. Uh, the next one is the only actual S tier I've given, which is Crystalline Reflection. And this has actually been nerfed by, by 10%. This was 30% damage absorbed, uh, and it's been nerfed to 20%. Um, so nerfed by 10%. I think it's still insanely good. It's adding a lot of damage over the course of a game. Uh, so I've given it an S. I think you can use this against pretty much anything. Um, and this, this is probably going to be our go-to default legendary if we're not sure what else to use against a comp or there's nothing special that we want. Uh, next is Kiss of Death. It reduces Shadow of Death's cooldown by 8 seconds, so that will reduce it to 10 seconds, down from 18. And causes its damage to trigger atonement when used on targets below 20% health. Well, this is relatively... The, the damage triggering atonement actually got nerfed. It was it was always triggering atonement, but they nerfed it to 20% because it was super powerful in Mythic+. Plus. Uh, I don't think this has that much application in PvP, but the reduced cooldown is definitely strong against mages. Having that 10 second cooldown death is... is potentially going to be good so i've given that an a i think we'll see some usage usage of that for sure uh clarity of mind during rapture power word shield costs 20 percent less mana which is nice uh, and applies six second longer atonements don't really care about that too much in pvp in my opinion i don't think that's something that you're really looking to get as an effect uh you know and invest in a legendary to get that so that's almost like wasted the, the mana reduction is nice but i don't think it's enough to warrant taking this legendary against pretty much any comp over some other stuff. Uh, it, the additional effect of it is that during pow uh, Spirit Shell, Powered Radiance costs 20% less from mana and applies 4 second longer terms. I mean, this is more of a raid mechanic in my opinion, not something we'll really care about in PvP. So I've given this a B. Um, I'd say it's closer to a C than an, than an A. Uh, and then these, the Holy Ones, none of them are really relevant, but we do have two Shadow uh, legendaries that are relevant to disc and we have pain breaker psalm which shadow of death consumes six seconds of shadow of pain and vampiric touch well that's not that part's not relevant the shadow of pain is instantly dealing that damage to the target and generating tennis and eight so what it does is essentially makes your deaths really strong but in my opinion it's potentially better to just run the death cooldown one if you want to get damage out of death maybe just run the death cooldown one if you're not worried about stopping cc with it and then just use it on cooldown for damage I think that potentially could be, you know, a better pick, given this a B as well. Not that strong for disc. Uh, and then we have Shadow Flame Prism, and this actually got nerfed twice, I believe, recently on beta. Uh, this was S tier. This was an insanely good legendary in terms of burst uh, and just mana as well. You could run Mindbender with this, and you could get actually two Mind Blasts off and a death during the Mindbender and increase it by 4.5 seconds, which is, you know, an extra two free hits. Uh, especially if you're running the Mindbender Conduit, which increases the the haste of, of the Mindbender. But what this did is made the Mindbender do, like, about 4k damage uh, when you did, like, a Mind Blast death. Like, extra 2k for each one. Something like that. And this has actually been nerfed by a considerable amount. Now, I'd say this is almost a B. Haven't had a chance to test it. Um, recently, but I'm going to give it a go next time I'm on beta, and if it is as bad as I fear, I'm going to move it down to a B. I don't think this is going to get that much use anymore. If it's not too bad and still has burst application, then I think there's definitely some comps where you could use it. Um, but right now, the nerfs have really hurt it for discs, so potentially not, not a worth anymore. So yeah, to summarize, best picks, I would say Crystalline Refre Reflection is your, like, your go-to right now. Kiss of Death, useful against mages, maybe Warlocks. Penitent 1, decent, but, you know, when you take Radiance, but maybe a bit too much RNG in it. Leap of Faith, really good against Cleaves. Power Infusion, good if there's no Purge or if you're playing RMP, something like that. Uh, and Measured Contemplation, maybe good when you need to do Burst Healing. Not too sure what comps you're going to run this against yet over the other ones. The 15 second kind of caveat of it sort of pushes it down a bunch, and I'd say this is actually quite close to a B. Um... So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all of them. Ah, uh, yeah, and Sephir's Proclamation, obviously decent. If you don't need any of the other ones, and if you're running PvP Trinket and you want to, you know, avoid some more CC against really heavy CC comps, I think that could definitely be uh, something that's something that's worth using. So that's it for the Legendaries video. Uh, if there's anything that you think I've missed or gotten wrong, 
or overlooked, please do let me know in the comments. I obviously have been testing a bunch of stuff on beta, but there's definitely stuff that I haven't kind of figured out yet. So if anyone has figured anything out, please let us know. You know, we're trying to just share as much info as we can with the priest community here and just get stronger together. So would be much appreciated. If not, uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.